Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. I have another Marine ECM, this time working on a Bobo Penta 2003 5.0 GXI EE. This is coming from Alaska, Anchorage, sent by Don. Don, this is your computer. And one thing that I want to do, well, this is just to show that this is his computer and I have a nice readout from him that I'm going to read with you in a second. I have the computer running for probably uh, a little over 10 minutes, as you see right here, uh, it starts with all malfunction one. So, so far it's been running good. But one other thing that I want to do, because this is the first time, no, first computer that I remember having from Alaska. So I already show you that beautiful map from the world that my wife and my mother-in-law gave me as a present. So this is your flag done. I'm going to, um, well, I, I should like, give me one second. All right, so finding Anchorage is around somewhere in here. So I'm just going to put one flag. This this is for Don. Sorry, I did it off a of camera. So thank you so much. Alaska is now in the map. And I will be trying to do the same thing with new countries. And also if I had, if, you know, more customers from all over the United States try to put a flag around where they are located. So it's kind of like it's starting to populate on the map. All right, going back into the test. So it says, um, all right, yeah, the description 2003 50 uh, GXIE, no power to start circuit was uh, was the first failure. Customer bypass the key switch and went directly to start to get engine to start. Engine only has 20 hours on a long block revealed. Engine started to knock and replace crankshaft position sensor. Engine fired up, customer pick up the boat, and you will not start once he got home. Another shop ran a diagnostics test and no codes present. I run a diacom diagnosis and keep getting disconnected. I did a, an onboard an onboard diagnostics system check and that all in connector diagnostics set to replace the ECM. <laughs> check power to crunch a position sensor. Cam shed position sensor coil, etc. No spark. All tests say all tests say to replace the ECM. Uh, have any questions? I watched your videos and I was amazed at what you can do. I have to admit, electrical is not my greatest strong suit. Thank you. I think it's Harry. No walk is the boat owner. He call and talk to you and ask me to send the ECM to you. All right. So thank you so much, both of you. All right. So. <clears throat> Yes, a sure commercial. If you have any computers that you need to send to test or to repair instrument cluster as well, um, as I described in there, I work in all automotive and marine ECM, PCM, modules, instrument clusters, and so on. This is the shipping address. If you want to start a conversation with me, just click in here. If I click in here, this is going to open the same thing will happen in your computer or in your phone. It will open your email um, browser or Let's call that browser, right? Your email uh, app, and you can send me an email like that. We can get in touch, or you can just click the less chat. The only concern, if or if you're going to start the less chat, please leave your email in there because otherwise it will just send a message, and if you're not there, you will not receive it. So this is the best thing to do if you are here and you want to wait for my responses. You do it, and I will respond to you as soon as possible. Sometimes it takes me five to ten minutes. Um, doing something else, right? But I'm trying to always be in touch and these pops out in my computer or my phone when somebody sends a message. <clears throat> All right, going on to this test. So I have right now, uh, I have two channels of my oscilloscope connected to the IAC valve, multimeter on sensor ground and sensor power, and that is correct. And then everything else is just an idle. So I'm getting 2.7 milliseconds of injection. I have also the injectors here, but as I mentioned in another video, the speed of the injectors milliseconds compared to the IAC position is very different, right? So that's what I have right now. I'm, I'm in half a second for division, so it's too fast or too slow the capture to see the injectors. So we will zoom in closer to see the injectors in a second. But I want to see is that we have this. So the IAC is controlling, the computer is trying to control the IAC. And we can see this 
on this no light, this is a specific for a four wire AEC. And we can see that we have signals on both yellow and green. <clears throat> and I'm going to accelerate. So we will see more of that. See how it's now green and yellow happening. I'm about, you know, 2,800, 4,000 RPM. So I'm going to change the throttle position accordingly. And we can see as soon as we touch the throttle, there is more activity on that um, AEC and then finds its place. And that's what the computer says. Okay, you know, I just commanded to go there. It should be perfect. And that's it. Because these are the same that we were seeing in the other videos, the AEC position, the AEC follower. And uh, let me see, I don't think we have in this one the desired position for the AEC. I might have to because I had deselect a lot of the pits because there are too many, but um, I have what I need in here. This computer has around, let me see how many hours total because I see 900 hours and a thousand RPMs, 303,000 to 4,000 and so on. So I would say probably maybe 1300 hours on this computer. I don't see, oh yeah, 1376. So this computer has 1376 hours on it and it's working good so far. I don't see any problem. So let's me let me go back to idle. Let me get some of those uh, <clears throat> at least the idle so we can see where we are, right? Because these numbers are so small that I know that you will not be able to see that. But now we can at least and then the start with all my functions. So we have one. I'm going to turn the engine off in a second. But let me go back to idle. All right, so we're going back to idle to see the activity in the in the AEC, and it's going to happen more as soon as I touch the throttle position, because right now as I am not, well, I just started to move the throttle, so we saw that activity there. I'm going to bring the map to my 12.6 value that I like to use for idle. So that all looks good. If I go down in the speed and I go down to like five or 10 milliseconds, we can see a very nice and very even um, injection timing. Let's see if this is being pulled to ground and this one is perfectly. Let me start, stop the capture because you know, it's just, sometimes it's a little hard to capture. Well, let me actually change this a little bit, like right there. Okay, perfect. Like that we can measure. That was a perfect stop. Just to see what the red channel is also doing because we want to make sure that those two drivers are being pulled completely to ground, and they are. As I mentioned in many, many of my videos, I like to see, let me take this off of the screen, these leftover oscillations. That means it's good. That means the computer is in control, and it has a still leftover energy as the driver was pulled to ground. So that's a healthy, a healthy driver. So nothing wrong with this so far. So I'm going to turn the boat off or you know the computer off so right now we should have zero rpms and that's exactly what we see in there zero or i'm going to turn everything off and you will see in a second i says the loss of syn synchronization so i'm going to turn on fuel pump prime is there and now we're going to run the boat and it run perfectly instantly let us check since we know that now the AEC is good and I can see that here. I'm going to move these two to the other signals that I like to check always, which is the tag signal and the, uh, give me one second because I'm move the connectors. Oops. All right, move everything. So we got in here still this, uh, yellow shallow is now in the tag and the green is on the EST signal. This is a one EST signal for the eight or uh, plug, sorry, because it's a distributor signal. So I have minimized, so I can do this on, on Picoscope. If you select the channel, let's say like the yellow channel, and I go to display, I see, or you can see this as a scale 0 0.5. Like I, if I go to one, that's the full size of, of the signal. I don't need it to be that big because it just, clear, you know, it's too much information that I really, I just needed to see happening so I can minimize it or make it a little smaller, right? So that's that's what I did in there. All right, so we can go uh, here. So, but what I want you to see is, is start with our malfunctions too. 
and it's running. Everything is present. I got no faults. So uh, Don and Larry, or Harry, sorry. Um, so far, I, he, I see no faults on the computer. Nothing that will prevent. I have all the signals, cam and crank and being read properly. And the reason I can say that is, we have injection and we have the EST. So if the computer produces the EST signal and the injector signals, that means the cam and crank are there. Otherwise you will miss one. And also the RPMs. That's why these are the main signals that I always check first. The second thing that I always do, and this is why I have this set up like this, is make sure that my five ball reference and my sensor ground are there. And you can check that onto your wiring and then uh, piggyback with like a, a piercing probe or something like this. This is a special probe that you can use again in four millimeter banana adapters and go behind connectors. Like I can go here and start looking at a signal without this sir, without disconnect. Because first thing you want to do is check without this, without unplugging. So you can find where the problem might be. Because if you start unplugging and you plug back, the connector might have been the problem. You fix the issue and you don't know where it was. So like, okay, it's working good, but then it will come back because all you did it was unplug and plug it back in. So the problem is still there. So if you either back probe with this kind of um, lead or piercing, piercing probes, let me show you one. All right, just to give you a different example, so we got the power probe. These are really good, but the only problem with power probe, and this is something I have said in many, many of my videos, is they have their own connection, is this is a four millimeter by reverse. So none of your leads will work only their own leads. So a company that does this kind of stuff is good for them, but also is forcing you to buy only their products. And um, um, if they're smart, they want to be universal, so anyone can use the leads they have and they, they can sell more. I mean, this is not a, um, a unique uh, market, let's say, you know. Uh, we can buy, or you can buy this uh, piercing pro from Amazon. They're good. Just make sure that they're four millimeter banana adapters. The four millimeter banana adapters are going to work with all your multimeter leads and also with your oscilloscope leads. So if you buy a piercing probe, what you're going to do is, as the name it makes it understandable, is that you're going to pierce the wire. So when you pierce the wire, now you're not disturbing the connection with a back probe or damaging the insulation on the connectors, but you have to make sure that after that, you're going to use liquid electrical tape liquid tape let me just put it like that i think you can find it like that yeah these are this these are really good i just opened the first one not even know whose company is or which company is this you can buy black or green i recommend to buy the green one the black is a little too gooey the green one is a little more liquid uh, so buy the green one i recommend it better and also it's easier to see when you did your repairs because that green is not ready coming on any of the wiring. So you will be able to see that you did the repair and make sure as soon as you remove the piercing, you put that liquid tape, especially on the Marine, very important. And if you have to retouch it, retouch it to make sure it's completely covered. All right, but that is how you start looking for problems. Okay, so if you cannot find a problem, so what I would recommend you to do is do the same thing with the prison probes and using just a multimeter. You can just put a multimeter to turn the ignition on and you have the fiber reference. Let's say I'm piercing this wire and everything seems to be normal. Well, let's leave the ignition on and start wiggling connectors. So with that multimeter now connected on this wire, you start wiggling connectors without unplugging it. You're, all you're going to do is, as I say, wiggle and you see how it goes to three volts. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's, let's focus in that area. You're going to start touching the harness. And when you touch the harness, something changes. Okay, well, well, let's focus into that area and see what is what is around there before we start taking it in it apart. See if the wiring is rubbing against the block. If it's, um, I don't know, like a metal bracket or something there is there. If it's close to the exhaust, see, see what you can immediately find. Because that is how you repair intermittence and problems that sometimes are impossible to find. All right, going back to uh, Don computer. 
It has been running right now for the second time or third time for another almost 10 minutes. So let's turn this off. We're going to do the same thing. So we're going to lose the communication. No more signals on this scope. So you can see that everything is live. All right. So ignition on, fuel pump on, and then start. And it starts immediately. If we see injector in here, we know it's running. As soon as I see these lights, see, let me. You see, when it's not running, we got no ignition and no injectors. So I'm going to turn everything back off. Ignition back on. So if you pump, I should go the prime off, but we have nothing in here. If the cam and crane signals are good and the computer is running, we're going to have the ESD signal and the two injector banks working. And we do. So it will need to update shortly. Yes, you see, I start with our malfunctions three times right here when I'm moving that mouse but everything everything is right there so i'm going to keep this computer running for a while and um see what i can find but so far so far so good so i don't see any problems in here done um so far the testing is good the next thing that i'm going to do because this is very important i'm going to open this computer make sure that none of that connector uh, these mephi ports are prone sometimes to the gel to go down to the connector size and start doing a lot of problems that otherwise you will not be able to see so let me open this up and i'll be right back all right yeah that's not the case on this computer again just to, so you guys can see in him that um this is his as you can see there is no gel attached to the cover and this happens most on the mephi 4 beats not on this one for zero five twos and I'm referring about these last digits in here, but I always like to check. Computer looks nice and clean and pristine. A very important when you're seeing computers like this is these two gray lines in here on both sides, that's a ground path. So when the computer or the engine, right, the boat or whatever, has bed grounds, the computer, or not the computer, the boat engine will try to crank and will utilize any of the grounds available, including the ones in the computer. And when that happens, a lot of current, a lot of stuff goes through and it start using these grounds and then it start to pit, like it's like black marks everywhere on the grounds and in the components which is not what I see here. This is a nice and clean computer. Communication is very, very fast. I have no issues so far. So don't, um, this is looking like the problem in your boat and not here. I'm going now that I have opened, put this into the microscope so I can, um, you know, check all the injector driver circuit, which is in here. We have crystal drivers. These are crystal MOSFETs protecting diodes, then regular transistors, and then the pre-driver. All this is the injector circuits. And we got BGT, this is, you know, 2003 computers, and the actual, um, I don't know, uh, technique or, uh, not technique, let's say, you know, um, hard to me to think and uh, keep expressing, but let's say, you know, the, um, the components that are being used in here, they're starting to use probably from 1995 to all the way to 2003. So technology, that's the word that I was looking for. The technology is not for 2003 because they don't make this just for this model year. And they can go up to 2005. 2005, they do have some small differences, but they use still the same printout. So again, the technology is not the latest, let's say, right? So, I mean, this is already 21 years old, but even technology in here is probably more, more older than that. But I mean, it's still really good. I mean, very well built computers, because we can see, I mean, they're still running and they're running a strong. All right, so let me check all this and just put the notes on the video if I find something, if I need to um, record a second part if I need or I see that it's a repair necessary, I will definitely do it. Otherwise, this will be the end and it's just a test uh, for the Alaska customer done. Thank you guys so much for visiting the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye-bye.